Hey guys, how are you doing? Right, I want to show you how to get the lawn of your dreams. Something a bit like that. Okay, we'll get to that. Um, you know, you're here because you want your lawn nicer, yeah? Of course you do. Everybody does. You don't come here because you want a rubbish lawn. You come here because you want a nicer lawn. Doesn't matter where you start from. They can all be fixed. They can all be solved to a degree. There's certain things you're going to struggle with, like shade and things like that. Problems with what's under the ground, they can be fixed. Problems with what's above the ground, they can also be fixed. All these things can be fixed, pretty much. You can always improve what you've got. If it's bare soil, if it's moss, we can fix everything. So I want to help you. Um, but trying to pick where you are coming from and your lawn and where it is right now is a difficult one. Unless I do a 12 hour video and go through everybody's lawn type, it's not going to happen. Let me just show you mine now. This is also an update on my lawn. Um, if you're new to the channel, basically we renovated this lawn uh, what, six months ago, something like that. I killed it off completely and I brought in a ton and a half of topsoil, it was probably close to two. We leveled out some of the dips and then we overseeded, a scarified, aerated, overseed and top dressed. This is where we're at now. Alright, so it's looking pretty good. We still have a bit of stress in the lawn. It hasn't quite sorted itself out yet. It's still very humid, it's very hot, but it's wet as well. So we are struggling to get rid of the fungus in the lawn, the little brown bits, tiny bits of red thread. The grass is just under that bit of stress. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we put on a fertilizer and we put on a weed killer and we put some turf salve on. What else did we put on? A wetting agent and we put a fungicide on as well. Now, I've done this before for other people and the results have been spectacular, to be fair. Um, I should have took some pictures. I was there yesterday, a little old lady's house. The difference is night and day from what she had. Um, her uh, partner passed away a few years ago and she wanted it to look amazing. So we finally got it where it's thick and green and lush. Anyway, so that's where we're at at the moment. I think it's definitely um, greened up from the wetting agent and the fertilizer and the weed killer is doing its thing. But the only other thing is remain, we've still got some flecks of brown in there, although I don't think it's quite as bad as it was. But overall, I'm pleased. It's only been a couple of weeks. I think another one, maybe two weeks, this should be well on its way. Also, we haven't had much sun this last week and a half. The um, We had a heat wave up until a couple of weeks ago, and then it's gone right down downhill. It's been cloudy, cooler, wetter all the time, windy and, and grey clouds. So the grass hasn't had every single thing that it needs. It needs air, rain and nutrients. It's got the air, it's got plenty of rain. Now if you get that balance wrong, there's a bit too much of one of those, then you get a problem with the lawn. So we've had too much rain, in other words, humidity and the heat. So that is what's continuing to give us this heat stress in the lawn. Still, can't complain, but we can always get better. So let's now think about your lawns. So if you've got a bare spot of lawn, bare spot of lawn, a bare spot of soil, you want to put some grass seed down, okay? Now you can't just chuck grass seed on the ground. Sure, you can. Some of those grass seeds will germinate because some of those grass seeds will touch the soil. And some of those seeds won't be eaten by birds. <laughs> And some of those seeds won't get blown away by the wind or washed away by heavy rain. All these things can affect the germination success of seed. So I've just brought you further up our garden here. Now this is a play area. We don't do anything with this. <coughs> Excuse me. I was testing out a combination of weed killers a couple of weeks ago. So I did actually put um, a weed killer on here and it's not done too much damage. But in general, this one here has had a paddling pool on it. So that's where the brown areas are around the edges. And it's just generally 
well worn, well trodden down, hence the patches. You walk on a lawn plenty of times, you're going to wear it down and wear it down and wear it down. Got a couple of wee burns there. And again, this, um, this has changed so many times. For a while there was grass here and then it was all rotivated and then it's been left and then a lot of that grass has come back through automatically because we haven't decided what we're doing with this. For now, trampoline and swing. Anyway, my point is, getting back to grass, if you've got this, if you've got patches, you've got to get some seed in. So you need to rake that first. You can do it with a garden rake, a springy rake, a metal springy rake, and you just scratch the surface so the soil is nice and loose and then you have a key a good seed bed then you can chuck some seed on but this is where you need to think now you can't just leave it like that you're halfway there the next step from here is to cover the seed you can use topsoil you can use multi-purpose compost i use either most of the time I use multi-purpose compost. So what you do, you get your bag of compost, grab a handful between two hands and rub your hands together so it drops down onto the surface of the seeds. And you only want a thin layer. When you're done, all you want to do is get your foot and just press it in lightly. So you now have seed that's touching soil and it's covered. So that seed is not going to get eaten by birds. It's not going to blow away. The only issue we might have is if we get heavy rain, but then you know that you wait for a drier period and you overseed. So that's what you do with bare spots. Now, the problem is, is if you've got shade and it's bare because it's under gigantic trees, you're going to struggle, right? Grass needs at least three hours of direct sunlight every day to be anything half decent. Sure, you'll get some of the seeds to come through. You can get a shaded seed and some of that will come through but every single year it's going to start to thin and that's just what's going to happen just to prove that okay when we renovated this lawn it's always suffered in that top corner there we've got the shade from there the fence and the tree okay so everywhere is looking pretty good but then when you come to here you can see oh it starts to thin okay you can see the soil in between and that's just add it that bit but yeah generally it's a lot thinner here you can see the bits of black in between the grass okay the patches and then if we come out of the shade and we're coming to a piece that has plenty of sun you can see it's totally different so the only way you can fix that is if you try and get some more sunlight to come in and that would be from um, repositioning like sheds and things like that, trying to get smaller fences, um, trimming back and pruning and thinning out trees that are above. Because they also, the other thing that trees do is they take the moisture out of the ground. So when it's hot, the tree has bigger, fatter roots and it's stronger than grass. As you can imagine, those roots are probably the size of your arm. Whereas grass roots, well, they're just tiny, aren't they? So, they compete, but the tree always wins when it's taking moisture out of the ground, so the grass struggles around trees. It's not impossible, but you've got to be overseeding a couple of times a year, and you've got to keep up really well with your watering, and you don't want to be doing anything that will stress the grass out, i.e. cutting too short and running all over it constantly. So, what else? Well, I'm going to talk about holotine aeration now. This is just basically putting a hole in the ground. Okay, holotine aeration. It's a machine that punches holes in the ground about the size of your finger, a couple of inches down, and that lets, air, that lets air in and nutrients get down to the root zone below. The grass will thrive, and the grass will thank you. I actually did this for a customer about three or four weeks ago. In the middle of summer I went and aerated his lawn and I went back yesterday and treated his lawn and um, it, it's, it, how can I explain it, it looks alive, it looks so vibrant, the grass, it looks like really, it looks like new grass what's just been grown, it's healthy and vibrant and that is any grass 
where the roots are allowed to grow into spaces. So when you do a renovation, you're churning that soil up first with the scarifier and the aerator. That's loosening that top layer of soil. So aeration will also help relieve some of the compaction in the ground, which will allow the roots to spread out and the grass will love it. Now, if your grass looks like a pale green and it's spongy under your foot, it needs raking out. A scarifier. A scarifier is just a machine what rakes the surface of the soil above the ground. Scarifying above the ground, holotine below the ground. Okay? And that scarifier is going to rake out all the spongy material, what we call thatch. So thatch is like a thatched roof. Okay, a thatched roof is designed to keep water out of houses. And if you get a build up of thatch on your lawn, it stops water from getting down to where the roots are. So it's important that you scarify every single year, once a year. If you want to do it twice lightly, go for it. So scarifying and aerating, regular mowing once or twice a week, maybe three times a week, and you don't cut too short those alone will get you a nice lawn moving on from this if you start to fertilize a few times a year and a weed killer as and when required and occasionally a little extras like seaweed humic acid wetting agents as and when now i will help you with that journey but i hope this has helped you um really like just in summary to get a dream lawn there's going to be some things you'll need to do a couple of times a year scarifying aerating maybe a bit of overseeding maybe a bit of top dressing you can also put some compost on your lawn once or twice a year even more often in fact at one point a couple of years ago i was doing it every couple of months and it makes a massive difference because it's getting some organic goodness down especially if you aerate first because some of that compost goes down into the aeration holes this works wonders if you've got clay lawns compost into your holes in your ground honestly what a difference that will make so things like scarifying aerating overseeding top dressing as and when the main things you can do are mow regular the more often you mow just taking the tops off not cutting it too short not cutting off more than a third or even more than a quarter or more than a fifth you're just taking them tops off but you're taking it off more often the grass will love you massively because all the stored energy is within that blade of grass. Okay? Um, and you cut the grass short, all that energy is getting cut out and, and taken away. So the grass is under stress. Okay? It's got no energy reserves to tap into. So you just keep taking the tops off, mow regular and not too short. This gets mowed at least twice a week probably three times a week and remember this is still quite new the roots are still not 100% established yet but we're getting there so I hope you've enjoyed this video you know what you've got to do hit that subscribe button down there subscribe and I'll do more videos like this um, yeah if you like the channel I'd appreciate it um, please give us a thumbs up any comments or questions on your lawn, drop them below and I will do my best to answer them for you. Um, I run my own lawn care business and it is very busy all the time. So I don't get as much time as I'd like to do these sort of videos for you guys, but I am trying. I'm going to start taking staff on, I think, so that will free me up to do a bit more on this so that I can help you. All right, so uh, we'll see you on the next one.